Welcome to Mickey Study Circle channel. In this video, we shall see how to do the computer drafting of the orthographic projection of planes using the Solid Edge software. Coming to the problem statement, a hexagonal lamina of sides 25 mm rests on one of its corners on HP. The surface of the lamina makes 45 degrees to HP and the diagonal passing through the center on which it rests is inclined at 30 degrees to VP. Draw the projections of the hexagonal lamina. So looking at the problem statement, we can arrive at a set of conclusions. The first thing is the given type of lamina is a hexagonal lamina and each of the side measures 25 mm. Coming to the resting condition, it is resting on one of its corners on HP. So we need to have one of its corner towards the right hand side of the observer. Next, the surface of the lamina makes 45 degrees to the HP. So with respect to the HP, the entire lamina is rotated in such a way that it is making an angle of 45 degrees. Also, with respect to the VP, it is the diagonal that is passing through the corner on which it rests, which is inclined to VP at an angle of 30 degrees. So unlike the other problems here, it is not the edge on which it is resting or the edge passing through the corner on which it is resting, which is inclined, but it is the diagonal that is passing through the corner on which it is resting, which is inclined to the VP. So obviously the diagonal length is going to vary from its initial position to the second position when the lamina is tilted at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the HP. So since it is the entity which is going to vary in its dimensions from the first two positions which is inclined to VP, obviously the given angle is a beta angle problem and we need to construct the beta angle because the word appears to be is not given with respect to the inclination of VP and hence we need to calculate the beta angle separately. So now we shall see how to construct the solution for the given problem statement. So we'll begin with drawing the xy line of thickness 0.18 mm. So we will draw a line of any arbitrary length and we shall annotate the line as xy and also the planes as vp and hp and draw the top view of the hexagonal lamina using the thick lines of thickness 0.50 mm in such a way that we have got one of its corners resting on the HP. So the edge of the hexagon measures 25. So next the angle of inclination is 0 degrees for the first edge. For the second edge the edge length is 25 and the angle of inclination is 60 followed by 25 mm edge length and the angle of inclination is 60 into 2 followed by the edge length 25 and the angle of inclination as 60 into 3. 25 is the edge length, the angle of inclination is 60 into 4. And we shall complete the hexagon lamina by entering the edge length as 25 and the angle of inclination as 60 into 5. So with this, we have completed the top view of the hexagon lamina such that we are having one of its corners which is towards the right hand side of the observer. So here this is how it is resting on one of its corners on the HP. So what we will do is we'll use the text option to annotate the corners. So this is the corner A, corner B, corner C, corner D, corner E and corner F. So as per the problem statement it is the diagonal which is passing through the corner on which it is resting. So we shall indicate that diagonal also. So using since this diagonal is a entity which is not visible to the observer, which is not forming any part of the polygon like the edges. So we shall draw this using the 0.13 mm thickness line. So now we shall use the distance between. Do not use the smart distance because when we extend this as the uh, projection line in the second position, it is going to vary. So always use the distance between. So we shall measure the initial length of the diagonal which is 50 mm okay and we should also show one of the edge length which is 25 mm okay so now we can go for drawing the front view of the hexagonal lamina so we shall select the projection line of thickness 0.13 mm and from all the corners draw the projection line such that it is intersecting the xy line so the front view will be on the xy line because the lamina is resting on HP. Okay, so now we will use the trim option, trim this portion of the XY line in order to get the front view drawn on the XY line. So using a thickness of 0.50 mm line, 
draw the front view as intermittent lines joining the endpoints of each of the projection lines. So it has to start from this endpoint, end here, start from here and end here, again end at this endpoint. So now we shall annotate the endpoints. So this is the corner A, so this is A dash in the front view. And here for the observer, corner B dash is visible first. So B dash inside the bracket and F dash inside the bracket and B dash outside the bracket. Here C dash outside the bracket and E dash inside the bracket. And here we have got the corner D dash. So this completes the front view of the hexagonal lamina. So with respect to the second position, he tells that the lamina is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal plane. So what we will do is we shall select the front view of the lamina. So select the intermittent lines and also the annotations using the control key pressed on the keyboard. Now select the move option, ensure the copy is on, keeping the point of contact as A dash, move the front view towards the right hand side of the XY line like this. And now we will go for rotate option, ensure the copy is off. So since it is resting on one of its corner, the corner A shall be on the XY line. So with this, we shall rotate, keeping point A as the first point of center and the second point of center as D dash and enter the angle of rotation here, which is 45 degrees to the HP. So it is inclined with respect to the HP. So this is how we complete the front view of the lamina, which is inclined to the HP at an angle of 45 degrees. Now we shall draw the vertical projection lines. So the lines should have a thickness of 0.13. So draw the vertical projection lines downwards from each of the corners. So if you are making it a continuous line, you won't get this points. So please do not make them as a continuous line in the front view. Draw the horizontal projectors from all the corners and intersect them with the corresponding projections from the front view. So now let us complete the top view of the hexagonal lamina by selecting a line of thickness 0.50 mm. So we shall begin with the corner A. So corner B is here, the point of intersection. And this is the point of intersection, which is going to mark us the corner C. And point of intersection indicates the corner D here. Point of intersection indicates the corner E. Similarly, the point of intersection or the end point of this projection line is going to indicate the corner F and then back to corner A. So now we shall annotate this. So this is corner A, corner B, corner C, corner D, corner E and corner F. So you can just uh, see that without even measuring the diagonal length AD has reduced in its length compared to the initial position. So now we shall uh, use the distance between and measure the distance or the length of the diagonal. So you can just see that there is a change in the diagonal length from 50 mm to 35.36 mm. So this is what is called as a distorted view of the hexagon. That means what? From the initial position, since it is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees to the HP, the diagonal is going to appear reduced compared to the initial position. And this diagonal is the one which is going to be inclined to VP. So since we are going to consider a parameter which is going to vary in its geometrical properties like measurement, that is AD in the first position to AD in the second position, it is a beta angle problem. So now uh, we shall use the trim option and trim this projection lines. Okay. So here it is uh, showing because it has taken the dimension. So these are the dimensioning line, not the projection lines. So now we shall go for drawing the beta angle. So for that, select the line option and select a line of thickness 0.13 and draw a line of any arbitrary length. Okay. So this is how we construct the beta angle separately. We can do it here also, but the best thing is always to do it separately so that there are no confusions. So draw a line of any arbitrary length from any arbitrary point first draw the original diagonal length which is 50 mm as the length of the line and the given angle which is phi so it is minus 30 degrees correct 
So from the endpoint of this line, which is measuring 50 mm, draw the locus line using the dotted lines. So just draw the locus line. So now we will annotate this. So this is the corner A and this is the initial length of the diagonal, which is uh, 50 mm, correct? So we can just show this for the reference purpose and also the angle between this is 30 degrees. This is the angle phi, which is given to us. So now we need to measure uh, the beta angle. So how do we construct the beta angle? Now we need to consider the arc of length 35.36, which is going to cut the locus of D. So let me just annotate this line as locus of D. So select the arc by center point. So just to indicate that it is an entirely different line, I'm going to change its color to red. So from corner A or from the point A, which is taken as the initial point of reference, let us try to cut an arc which is having a radii of 35.36, which is the length of the diagonal in the second position. So we are going to cut an arc in such a way that it is going to intersect the locus of D. And next, draw the line. So from the point of intersection of this locus line and the arc, extend it towards the point of contact that is A, correct? So this angle is going to be the beta angle. So the angle between this line and this line, so this is 45 degrees, which is the beta angle. So this is also corner. Uh, this is the one more diagonal D. So we shall annotate this. This is the diagonal D from the second position. So if you get confused, you can just call this as D1. Similarly here, let me just annotate this as D1. Okay. So with this, we have seen how to construct the beta angle. So let me just uh, shift this a bit upward so that uh, the front view of the third position will not be disturbed. Okay. So now we shall draw a line of any arbitrary length with a thickness of 0.13. But what is the angle? The angle is the beta angle, which is 45 degrees. So draw a line of any arbitrary length, but the angle shall be 45. So minus 180 plus 45, because you can see that the direction of the angle is in this condition that is from here till the XY line. So this will be what 180 minus 45. So that is the angle. So you can just show this as the beta angle 45 degrees. So on this 45 degree line, we shall place this hexagon. So to make this rigid, what we should do is first let us just try to trim this projection lines for time being so that it has been made rigid. So let us select this hexagon and make this a rigid set by clicking on this icon rigid set in the relate menu and tell accept. So now this is a rigid set. Use the extend to next and now you can extend the projection lines. So now we'll go for selecting the entire hexagon lamina along with the annotations. That is corner A, B, C, D1, E, and F. So this is corner D itself. Just to uh, understand that it is the diagonal of a uh, different length, we have taken this as D1. So now we shall use the move option, ensure the copy is on. So since the diagonal AD1 is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees, keeping point A as the reference, move this point A on the line that you have drawn at an angle of 45 degrees. You can just see that the color is changing to red when you place this. So now this is how I'm going to place and then select the rotate option. So keeping A as the first point of rotation and D as the second point of rotation, I'm going to ensure that even the corner D1 is going to lie on this X1 uh, on this uh, 45 degree line. Correct. So this completes the top view of the hexagon lamina in such a way that the diagonal through the corner on which it is resting is inclined to the VP at an angle of 45 degrees. So now we shall draw the projection lines in the front view and intersect them with the projection lines from the 
top view to get the front view of the lamina. So corner A is having its projection line along the XY line. Corner B here. Corner C is here. So D is the topmost uh, point. And then E is here. Corner F is here. So now we shall complete the front view of the lamina by selecting a line of thickness 0 0.50 mm. So from corner A to corner B, from corner B to corner C, corner C to corner D or D1, then corner E, corner F, F to corner A. So this completes the hexagon lamina in its front view. So use the trim option and trim the projection lines of unnecessary length. And now let us annotate this front view. So this is corner D dash and this is corner C dash, corner E dash, corner B dash or B prime and this is corner A dash. This is corner F dash. Okay, so how do we validate? It is initially resting on the corner A here and even in the final position, it is resting on the corner A dash. Correct. So now we shall indicate the direction of the projection lines by using the leader option in the annotation menu. Change the color of the arrowhead to black. Click OK and indicate the direction of the projection lines. So these are all drawn downwards. And these were drawn upwards to get the front view. So with this, we complete the drafting of solution for the given problem statement. So this is the separate beta angle construction and the beta angle that is determined here is used for the construction of the third position that is its diagonal AD1 which is passing through the corner on which it is resting is inclined to VP at an angle of 45 degrees. So this is the apparent angle of inclination where this is the true angle that is 30 degrees. And since we are using a dimension which is not having the same length even in its second position we are going to have its uh, beta angle determined. So here uh, the position is change the dimension of the diagonal so we'll just go for distance between again and show the dimension to be 50 mm correct so with this we complete the problem statement thank you all for watching